Turn my phone down. Yo, 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 it's the Good Life Podcast, The Kickback. It's your boy, Good Life Russ. I go by that name on all social media handles, so make sure you follow me. Hey, I just want to always shout y'all at the beginning and say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This would not be a show without the listeners and the followers and supporters. So please keep doing what y'all doing, man. Like, share this show with your best friend, your grandma, your goldfish, your television set, whoever you care about the most. Like, give them this link. Tap them into this show because I promise they are going to get some growth. We come here to talk about mental health. We come here to talk about community, wealth, self-care, self-education, self-identity. But most important, we come to talk about love and we spread love, you dig? So this is one of my favorite shows. We have a new guest on the show today. Um, I've known this individual for a long time, you know what I mean? And one thing I can say true is I've never heard anything negative, anything weird. I've only heard positive things, you know what I mean? I only hear people saying like, oh, that's who's going to be on the show. Like, I I, I went to middle school where I went to elementary where that's why... Like, that's what I love. That's what lets me know we're in the presence of, of greatness. You know what I mean? So we're going to let you introduce yourself, man. We're going to let you get comfortable and kick back. So you can tell them your name, where you're from, and a little bit about yourself. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Kenyatta Bosley. I am from Columbus, Ohio, born and raised, um, went to school with Tim, uh, go way back, uh, went to Northland, graduated from Northland in 2018, uh-huh. then pursued my associate's degree um, from Columbus State, graduated, went on to Ohio State, graduated from Ohio State, um, and kind of just started my grown-up life then. Um, at the time, I was a young mom. So I was just grinding through school, working, making little to no money <laughs> compared, mm-hmm. comparable to, you know, where I'm at now today. Mm-hmm. Um, a little bit about me is I started, I started my career in public health and I worked several years for the health department, uh, which was a, it was a pretty fun job. Um, And then I took my talents to the Columbus Blue Jackets and I worked there for a few years. Um, And then when COVID hit, uh, I was, I went in one day, it was like eight o'clock in the morning. I was laid off by like 10 o'clock in the morning, like 10 o'clock, a couple hours later. Um, So when COVID hit, the first thing that left was sports. And fortunately it was my, career at that time that um, left along with it. Mm. Um, So after that, I, um, myself and my fiance, we birthed a business. It's um, a rental car company. Um, It's called Prestige Rentals, where we essentially, we just help people that need um, rental cars for whatever reason, your car broke down or you don't have the money to get a new car or whatever the case may be. Um, so that's what we do. I've been doing that for what, like three years now. So yeah, since COVID started, um, I also do corporate housing. So, um, we host traveling professionals, nurses, doctors, lawyers, they're coming into Columbus, um, and we allow them to stay at our properties. And mm-hmm. I've been doing that for about two years now. And I'm also a full time mom. Of, I have, I'm a girl mom. So I have three daughters and I have a bonus. And I also have a bonus son. So um, we have a beautiful blended family. My fiance, he's a great, great man. Um, he's an engineer by trade and he's probably one of the smartest persons that I, that I've known. Um, other than that, that's a little bit about me. Yeah. So college grad to unemployment, to business owner, to, uh, mama (laughs) panure. That's about me. That's all. That's it. (laughs) I love it because. I mean, you can't just look at someone's page and know what they've been through. Like, that is awesome. That's awesome. Shout out to the love. 
first <laughs> off, I love when people speak about love and love will take you far in this world. That's beautiful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. I do. I truly believe everybody should experience um, pure, true, genuine love. And I'm not talking like the grass is always green. I'm talking like, you know, the goods, the bads, the uglies, the ups and the downs, too. I agree. I agree. And, and that love teaches us parts about ourselves. You know, relationships aren't always about what we can do for other people. A lot of times it's, it's them allowing us to unlock parts of ourselves that we've been kind of holding off or we've been afraid to really shine light on. You know Absolutely. what I mean? That's dope. That's dope. <laughs> I love to hear that. I love to hear about love. And, and now this is going to make this conversation a, a lot smoother. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like you know, just talking to you now, I can't, I can't hear the growth. You know what I mean? And I, and I, and I see people from high school here and there, but when we talk, I can hear the growth. I can see that you went through whatever you went through and you've been healing that and you've been working on that. So, so what has your healing journey been like? What's my what? Your, what has your healing journey been like in your life? Um, well, so let's um, take it back to 2018. Okay. So 2018, um, I was at my 10 year high school reunion and I'm partying and I'm having a good time. And, you know, I'm looking, I'm just interacting with all the classmates. Everybody's catching up, you know, just having a good time. And mm -hmm. then, um, you know, I kind of, it's like, while I was out having a good time, at that moment, I was also losing my father. Mm -hmm. And my father, he was killed in 2018, the night of my high school reunion. And, um, of course, I didn't get the news until um, you know, next, next morning type of thing. And, um, what happened was, you know, I'm getting up, I'm doing my mom thing at the time. I only had one child. Um, and then I had my bonus son and we were getting ready to go to my daughter's softball game. Mm -hmm. So, you know, normal day. And then I get a call that my father was killed mm. and that kind of just like, changed like my entire life because um like up until that point I wasn't like I went to church and stuff like that but to say I was like a faith writer I, I can't say that like I believed in God and I you know I felt something but didn't really like have big faith mm -hmm. at that time and the year that my dad died um literally like January 1st, something told me that this is going to be the worst year of your life. Like mm -hmm. that's with that. Some, something came to me and told me this mm -hmm. and literally the same day that I had got that vision, mm -hmm. what you want to call it, my engine broke down, like my engine busted in my brand new car. So it's like, damn, no. man. Like, this is a brand new car, like 2018 Denali. Like, what the heck? So mm -hmm. I'm thinking, like, oh, that's that's what that's that's the start of my year. Not not knowing that September of that year I was going to be losing my dad. Mm. Um, and so trying to grieve and heal and work and be a mom, that was like one of the hardest things that I had to go through because like the world doesn't stop like you <laughs> you stop but the world doesn't stop you know what I mean people laughing smiling doing their daily duties and you're like dang I can't even like roll out the bed today you know yeah. or like like my daughter she missed a lot of school that year because it was just some days I just didn't want to just get out the bed to take yeah. her to school or do anything um, so I ended up having like to take time off work and to start healing. I had, um, I went to therapy 
Okay. And that was like my first time ever like experiencing like therapy or grieving counsel or counseling, like anything like that. So that opened up like a whole nother door for me. And it allowed me to remember like all of the good things and all of like, you know, my dad, like actually being there for me and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So that kind of started that process. And um, it grew me a lot closer to, you know, my mom and my siblings and, you know, mm -hmm. certain, you know, family members and stuff like that. But it also helped me to not be so angry mm -hmm. about, you know, somebody taking my father's life because I couldn't wrap my mind around mm -hmm. how can you how can you take a life that you didn't give? Right. I, I couldn't wrap my mind around that. I couldn't wrap my mind around like just and you know, um you gotta think like when a woman loses her father, it's like dang who's gonna walk me down that aisle at my wedding or mm -hmm. you know I had I had like purchased a home a few years prior to that and my dad he would come over and like dang who's gonna cut my grass who's like who's just gonna do those daddy duties yeah. for my grown ass you know so yeah. um but it was really just um counseling that really helped me helped me and um that was a part of I would say that was a part of like my self-care um, okay every day I, I literally took it moment by moment by moment and um i mean went from not wanting to get out the bed to okay let me just open up my windows the day and just get back in the bed yeah you know and then like okay well let me um <laughs> shower today or whatever like just every day trying to do something one percent better um uh -huh. so i was um like I said, I was off work. Um, then when I finally went back to work, I was working. I was doing a lot of community work. So I was working in um, the hoods and working in like one, one like just this, this was like the it for me for this specific this specific job is I literally had to. I did a home visit for a family mm -hmm. and the home was on the same street that my father was killed on. And it just was something in me. I'm like, I, just, I can't, I don't have the, I just don't have it in me right now to continue this journey with this job. It's too stressful. You know, y'all want me to come to work every day. Like, it, it was yeah. just, <laughs> so, I, um, so then I went to the Columbus Blue Jackets and started my journey there. It was more, you know, the atmosphere, the environment, the people it was more fun and more upbeat. I was, um, Healing a little better, um, you know. My counseling sessions started to decrease, so I was I was doing I was doing okay. Like, um, but then fourteen months later, my mother passed away. Oh. So it was another blow, and um, that was more. That was more like. I mean, like when you say a dagger in your heart, like you don't mm -hmm. have like that. Anybody that's listening know who has lost their parents, they know that they know the feeling. Like if you were close, you definitely know that feeling. Um, yeah. So that was like another hard thing because like a void, like an emptiness there. Yeah, it was is definitely emptiness and. Um, I went through like a period where it was just like I just wanted to just break shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> like I was yeah. just upset. I was just, you know, I'm, you know, you just, you just don't. I don't know the feeling. I can't really yeah. explain yeah. it, but you know, you just feel like everything you once had has left. But um, today, I can say. Um, so my mother passed. So dad passed in 18. My mom passed in 19. So fast forward to now, I can say that I, you know, genuinely miss my parents, but I miss them for the selfish reasons that we all yeah. miss our loved ones for, right? Like I miss, like 
oh man, I wish my my children was able to, you know, my babies were able to meet my grand, I mean, my parents, or, you know, I wish my dad was able to see my oldest daughter do so many great things at school or, you know, stuff like that. So it's all selfish reasons because their spirit is still here and, yeah. Yeah. you know, they still live in, in us and with us. Um, but obviously they're not here in the flesh, but I'm, I'm liberated and I'm happy. Yeah. I'm yeah. happy that my parents have first and foremost um, were picked to be my parents yeah. and, um, regardless of, you know, how they may have raised me or the decisions they have made when I was a child or whatever, like I get it all now that I have kids and I understand the choices that they have made and the sacrifices that, I, that they have made. But I definitely 100% know that if they weren't my parents, I would not be the woman that I am today, you know, good, bad, and, and uh, good, bad, and ugly definitely wouldn't be who I am today. And I am happy to know that I am like a whole woman and I don't suffer from daddy issues and yeah. Yeah. Um, mama, mama issues. And I know how to sustain and pay bills and thrive and, mm -hmm. you know, not struggle and not have to move back home and stuff like that. So I'm, um, I do miss them dearly, but I'm grateful that you know, they're not, they're not in this hell anymore. Yeah. And they're actually on earth, heaven, whatever you believe right. in. But um, yeah, so that's my healing journey. That's beautiful. First off, my condolences, you know, that's, that's heavy. Um, her, I didn't hear know much about your mom, heard great things about your dad, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. From a lot of our peers and people we were around. So yeah, that's heavy. You know what I mean? And to see you move through it eloquently, you know, I think that's that's what they look down on. That's what they still feel. And 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 I agree. What I believe in, they always hear. You know, we keep them alive and we keep them going. And with a lot of who they were, they put into us. So we're still keeping who they were, their character, their jokes, they, you know what I mean? Alive. And that's and that's important because we never know who's missing the people we missing. You know, so Absolutely. I, I love that. I love that. Um, so how are you now today with, with therapy? You still use therapy? Um, so no, I do not use therapy um mm. anymore. I I'm not I'm open to I like I can go back anytime I want, you know yeah. what I mean? But um right now I'm kind of just focusing on my family that um, you know, my fiance and I have created and um, you know, he's, he's helped me a lot through this journey. Uh -huh. um, but my therapy really is just talking to, just talking to people like, yes. you know, because a lot of people, they say, man, y'all, you're so strong, you know, yada, yada, yada. And it's just like, you don't know how strong you are until you only have your strength to rely on. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so it's really not me being strong. It's the guy in me that's keeping me. Exactly. <laughs> and truthfully, therapy is not a permanent process. You know, the right. therapy is to give us the techniques and the confidence to do the things we know we can do, but sometimes we get too afraid to do. And you, you creating your own union, that creates therapy within the home because the kids absorb y'all's interactions and y'all's Oh, yeah. You oh, know yeah. What I mean? Yeah, I mean, and shoot, my kids know, like, if I'm, like, I cry in front of my children, they know yeah. that I miss my mom or my dad at times, and it's like, shoot, they miss them too, but um, it's a healthy, it's a healthy, like, space. It's it's definitely a healthy space. Yeah, I love that, and and, and that's what I encourage a lot of people, you know, when I push therapy. I've been doing psychology since I was 15. You know, a lot of people don't know, but um, I'm on the autistic spectrum. So that's what really got me into psychology. You know, a lot of things I've experienced. So in this time, like, the beauty of therapy is when you already have it at home. You know what I mean? And then once you've done it, now you know you can do it. 
Because for a lot of people, it's this huge feat that they're like, I don't think I can do it. So it's like, really, I, I, I tell people, just try it. You know, this isn't something you sign up for the rest of your life, but try it. It's the beauty about therapy is um, the <laughs> because when I was going through therapy, the only person I took to therapy with me one time was my daughter. Mm -hmm. um, and at the time she was 10. But she's she's so above her. She's so ahead of her time. Um, and then my fiance went with me a couple times. But the best thing about therapy is you get to talk about everything to people to a person who knows not going to run back and tell your business. Right. They ain't going to use it as aim to, when they get mad at you. Like right. you know. Um, and you, I mean. A lot of times when I like when I left my therapist, my shoulders were lifted. Like, oh, thank yeah. you, God. like yeah. you know, like I needed to get that out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, today was just stressful. Like, it don't even always have to talk up. You, it doesn't always have to be like a crying session. Right. But it's just so. It feels so good to talk to somebody who's not biased. Like, who's yeah. not like they ain't gonna tell you what you want to hear, what you need to hear. They just gonna listen. And sometimes I feel like that's what we need. We just want somebody just to listen. Like, don't say nothing. Just listen. Just hear me out real quick. Yeah. So that's the, I mean, I recommend it to anybody. Yeah, to I love that. I love that. Y'all heard her. Go, go try some therapy. And again, <laughs> like, we were, like we're saying, therapy is supposed to be had at home. We can have therapy all the time. Just like all throughout my day, I meditate. I find time to just sit with myself and be present. We can be doing these things around the clock and build them into our routine. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, someone commented, it, it helps make sense of our muddled mess in our minds. Yeah, because especially the more you learn and the more you obtain, your mind will be like a circus. You yeah. have to learn to tame that thing. <laughs> and you know, it's so crazy because, like, when uh, this was like in my experience, like, when I was like working like my nine to five and stuff, uh -huh. I don't really remember being like super creative, having like a whole bunch of thoughts in my head. But like now that I don't have that like nine to five and it's just I'm doing this little entrepreneurship stuff, I'm my mind is like this, like it's ramp, it's like racing 24-7, like middle of the night. I can't sleep. I didn't had a dream or something like that. Just it doesn't matter. It's always racing. So you can't settle like you. You're always anxious at a new idea or something else that's gonna come up or like dang, like whatever. So it's definitely that meditation part is important. And mm -hmm. I mean, again, it's all a part of self care. Like, ladies, mm -hmm. y'all go get your hair done, y'all nails done, might buy a new bag, but you don't go get a massage. Now your body all messed up, or you know your brain, your mind all messed up because you're not, you know paying into your mental health and shoot if y'all got insurance my my most insurance is is, is free nowadays like you yeah. get like five free sessions so yeah. it's definitely a win-win yeah and that's where we're moving into this new age you know what i mean i believe in duality i don't believe that there's good and bad in the world i think everything has good and bad to it you know what i mean so when we start to understand self-care a lot of how we learned it is just by addition. What can I add to my life? What can I eat? What can I drink? But there's a whole nother side of it. There's also a self-care to where you're not doing toxic shit no more. And you're not poisoning your body no more. And you're not gossiping. Mm -hmm. You big like that yeah. also has to start factoring in. It's not always what we can do for ourselves. Sometimes it's what we're not doing to ourselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, it's so funny that you say that you don't you're you don't feel like it's a such thing as good and bad because I don't either. Yeah. And like I understand that a lot of people would not agree yeah. on that level. But I don't I don't believe in that. Like I believe that God is a fair God. Mm -hmm. He's gonna punish you and he's going to reward you good or bad, but it's fair. You might not think that is fair in that moment. But to that person is fair. And I I didn't get to that point until like far into my grieving process. Like yeah, yeah. far into it. 
But yeah, I don't. And that's and that's a lot of times what it takes. You know what I mean? My breakthrough came like when I lost my son because, like, for you truly to grow, grow and change, like you have to lose everything. You got to mm-hmm. lose your belief system. You got to lose your comfort zone. You got to lose your laziness. You got to mm-hmm. lose your weakness. Like you have to get rid of that because, like you said, when you only rely on your strength. You can't make no excuses. You can't call off nowhere. Like you gotta, you gotta step up every single time. So when you get in the habit of stepping up, that becomes who you are. Your DNA starts to be someone who steps up, someone who holds themselves accountable, someone who doesn't just put themselves in the mess. You dig what I'm saying? But it takes that blow. You know, I was listening to um, because I, I listen to like heavy music you know i like my movies but i listen to lectures i like mentors i like people mm-hmm. sitting talking about the universe and aliens and yeah. shit like <laughs> so i was listening to this lady lecture and she was saying um i can't recall her name but she was saying a lot of people haven't changed yet because nothing like they haven't been scared enough into changing they haven't been through they haven't <laughs> See, they still comfortable in they lie. They still comfortable in they BS, yeah, but yeah. they haven't had that punch in the gut that's just like, yeah. ooh, I can't do that it, again. That hurt. <laughs> it, it's it's so crazy because like so many people who are like safe and they're like scared to take risk, you know, they they listen to or they might have seen their parents just work and retire, die, all that kind of stuff. Um like it was so many of those people who like counted me out and like to- just had so much negative to say about, oh, you're quitting the government. You're quitting the city job. Mm-hmm. Oh, you quit the blue jackets. Like, no, I got laid off, but shoot, I could have quit them too. Right. <laughs> you know, like, oh my God, you're buying a house. You're going to be 30. You're, you're going to be in that 30 years, like all kind of stuff. And you know, it's like every, like every time, like I've always like just surpassed like what they might have like doubted me or whatever. And it's just like, you ain't been through enough because yes. I'm going to tell you right now, you might can envy me or you might think that I'm doing more than you or whatever. But at the end of the day, you would never go through what I went through to get where I'm at. You would never go through losing two parents. You know what I mean? Teenage pregnancy. Like you would never go through none of that to have to get to the level that I am. And and you would (laughs) just wait till you see my next level, Mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, I I talk to like my brothers about that all the time. And one of my brothers said, he was like, y'all, he was like, you already made it to the big league. Like there's, (laughs) there's no more other points to prove like if somebody got anything bad to say then you know like they just they're, they're, they'll never get they'll never go through what you went through yeah like, like at all and I think that's why it's easy to criticize but yeah. it, it's it's on the way up you know what I mean these things are on the way up I think these things are the humbler they remind us like yeah you went through a lot but it's still more journey <laughs> it's still more hardships it's still more difficulty so you're doing it the right way you're creating unions you're bringing in a partner you're bringing in family you have that foundation and again that's a thing a lot of our generation is afraid of you hit the nail on the head they've yeah. seen so i've seen more bad relationships than good ones in my lifetime you know what i mean from the people close to me and i always use that as fuel that's why i don't think there's good and bad it's just perception because I can go, be going through the same situation someone else is, but I do something different and get a different outcome. So for me, I I use those things. You know what I mean? I would call I would consider myself more of a spiritual person. So yeah. I use my magic, and our magic is taking that negative and making it do what we want it to do instead of what was me or being a victim. It's like okay, this tried to break me and it didn't. So yeah. now when I go into the next thing, I got confidence because that thing breaks most people. That thing should have killed me. Yeah. And I'm still here, still standing, <laughs> still <Yeah>. swinging. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what else can get in your way? You know what I mean? That's why you got to lose it all to create mm-hmm. something new. And, and I think you, you know, you're one of the ones who are becoming the pioneers. Like yeah. a lot of us, we sat out and planned for these new lives, but some people had to go live it. They had to actually go do these things. You yeah. know what I mean? And now that we're in this position, like, in 2023, I mean, the world, the universe basically said, put up or shut up. Like, 
for everybody. <laughs> like everybody now since the pandemic, it's like either you're gonna go eat for yourself or you're gonna starve. And yeah. it's cold out there. Yeah. Businesses is shutting down, the government losing money, banks yep. is closing. Yep, yep. We got a head start. It's it's time to, to bet on yourself. Yeah, because we already seen with COVID that we they benched us, man. I'm telling you, like. I went to work. It was eight in the morning. I was laid off by 10. I was texting my fiance, like whatever this shit is, it's a wrap. I'm about like, I'm literally, I'm on my way home there. It was not, it was like nothing else. It was, it was, it, it was like bad. Like it was bad. I mean, it was good in a way. Cause look, it's yeah. like, it, it, it helped me in this, in this part of my life. But yeah. you, know, you in that moment and you like, dang, man, I got to survive or, I got kids to feed. Like they trying to lay a nigga off. Like you know, <laughs> it's crazy. So, I, so you talking about the Blue Jackets, correct? Mm -hmm. So what? So I'm curious. What did you do there? I was a food safety manager. So I right. shout I, out to the Blue Jackets. I fuck with the Blue Jackets. Yeah, it was cool. So I um I made sure all of um the the, the people who cook the food, so like the food preparers, I made sure that they were safe, sanitary, okay. you know, because I was a, uh, at, at one point when I was in, at the city, I was a food inspector. Okay. So I did all the restaurants, all the fairs and stuff like that. Put the That's little grease sticker on the red sticker, all that stuff. So I just was doing the same thing, but just for the Blue Jackets, because they had to make sure they players and stuff wasn't about yeah. to get sick. That's dope. Yeah, it was a really, it was actually, it was a really fun job. Like, it was fun. <laughs> Especially because, like, I ain't, I was my own boss. I ain't really had nobody, you know, huffing down my back or nothing like that. So, yeah, it was fun. That's, I, I feel that. And and I think, <laughs> you know, I always love to ask, especially now, how people's 2020 was, their 2021. Because that's, again, why I don't believe in good and bad. Everyone's couple years was different. Um, you know, I, I, my thing is, so since my 2018 and 2019, I would say in those moments, they were bad because I was losing people mm -hmm. that I loved. Um, nothing that I have experienced to this day will compare. So from then on out, everything is good. Like my 2020 mm -hmm. was good. 2021 like it's it's all it's all good like it is whatever it's gonna be <laughs> it doesn't I love that yeah like as long as yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, the, the closest thing I would I would say you know especially speaking on my my experience is like you're reborn yeah you know what I mean and, and you try to tap into old parts of you and it's not there it yeah. feels like you're in someone else's body and mind and you're like observing. And really yeah. what that is, is you've been reborn. You have to create because what happened to you broke that old part of you. Like mm -hmm. that part doesn't exist. So you can take some of those pieces and add to this new, but you got to make a new you. Yeah. So like I always described it as um, this is just like just from my personal journey, like back when I had lost my parents and going through like my grieving process, um, I was shipwrecked mm -hmm. and I was the only one on the boat and my boat was sinking and only I could rebuild my boat. Mm -hmm. So um, actually like I started like writing and I have like a book that I, I have never published it, but I do have like a, a book that I did make and it was about my grieving process and it's, it's, it's called Sh shipwrecked and it's mm. like learning to rebuild your boat. And I mean, it's like only you could do it. So yeah. We might need that book. <laughs> no pressure, but we might need that book. <laughs> hey, I'm always, I'm always working on something. So yeah, we'll I definitely love that concept and I love that. I, I can see that and I get that. And that's, and, and even when we see in movies and stuff like Gilligan's Island, that's when they really have to become a new person. Yeah. Like, hold up, I'm shipwrecked on this island. I didn't know I could build a hut. Hold up, what else can I do? Like, can I fry fish? Like, what? hold up. Like, it forces you to explore new parts of yourself. So to me, 
we can transcend when we make that our self care, looking for new parts of ourselves, cooking new stuff, learning new languages, traveling new places, Mm -hmm. having new conversations, telling new jokes, you know? Yep, Yep. absolutely. And like when you're like, like you said, reborn, the it's it's a weird like I mean it's a process that you have no choice but to respect yes. because you have all these other spiritual things coming at you at the same time and you like God like I can't take I don't want no more you know I don't mm-hmm. I don't want nothing else bad to happen or whatever so you like when you even when you're trying to change like your paradigms or whatever um whatever spiritual journey you're on at that time like you're always going to have like some other negative spirit that is go- i mean it lets you praying against it or yeah being positive manifesting something different like you always going you'll be able to you definitely going to be able to feel like when you're when it's time for you to level up cuz you get a lot yeah. of stuff thrown at you yeah, and that's when those things, you know, are attracted to you when you're in your new journey. It's it's because you're vulnerable. It's because yeah. you're weak. It's because you don't know a lot of people here. You don't know, you know, techniques and habits and things that you know calm yourself down and de-stress. So that's why those things are vital that we continue them. You know, I've ran into these same things. We want to be healed, yeah. and life is a healing process. I don't yeah. believe we'll ever be healed. I think yeah. when you heal trauma, you create new trauma. When we learn things, we learn more about the bad things in the world. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? When we learn the good. So we're constantly trying to balance ourselves. Yeah. Wow. Throwing a new love interest in the mix. Throwing a new career in the mix. Throwing yeah. a new job, new hobbies. Yeah. Then realizing like, damn, do I got enough time for myself? And going back, you know, we're constantly yeah. teeter-tottering and I feel like there is no completion of the race. We're just on this journey Mm -hmm. and we're all just moving and we're working. And the best thing we can do sometimes is be present and stop. I tell people so much, you're moving so quickly on your journey. Like you can't smell the roses. Like you can't enjoy the scenery. It probably just looks like a blur. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy because when you, when you're moving that fast, you're feeling like I got to move this fast because I'm already so far behind. Yes. And when you you're moving so fast, it's like, dang, am I re- am I getting somewhere or am I not? <laughs> then you gotta stop. Like it's been times where like like in my bed in our bedroom, we have uh we got like whiteboards and we yeah. have our goals for the year and everything like that written down on each side of our beds, and it's it'd be like eight months into the year, and I'm like running, 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 and I have to look at the goals like, oh, shoot, I done did like 16 <laughs> out there. Like, you don't ever really stop and think, you know, and even, like you said, smell your roses, celebrate yeah. your accomplishments until it's like the end of the year, you working, trying to figure something else out what to do. Yeah, until we're forced to, and that's playing behind. You know, life is, to me, to, to control life, it's a proactive process. And a lot of us have been taught reactively. We've been taught on survival, how to survive in survival. But yeah. no one has taught us abundance because you you can only teach what you've experienced, you know. So they understand it in theory. They get wealth in theory. But a person who's never had wealth can't teach you how to get wealth and maintain it. So right. now that we're getting to this new accountability with ourselves and this new healing yeah. This is what I feel like we're butting heads about so much because we have this side of us who went through the mud and healed and we have this other side that's playing victim and we're like, we don't got to do that no more. It's yeah. time for all of us to go after our abundance. We don't need handouts from the government. We don't mm-hmm. need to depend on people. We don't need to rely on people. Like We got each other, but yeah. that starts with self. It starts with learning to love yourself and, and right. we've all been hurt. That is a big reason why I do this show to show many people like we all have our perspectives. We've all been, we're hurting now, mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean we have to stop. That don't mean we got to wage war with each other. You know what I mean? And that doesn't mean we have to keep doing what we've been doing. Some things that we got from our parents' generation was amazing. Other things we have to repurpose. And right. what I think the biggest thing for us is, is the term family. Like we have to re-identify what it means to be family. Yeah. And we've been so lonely as black people. We just invited everybody to the cookout. Like we just let everybody in the family, like, hold up. 
<laughs> black people nice. Black people are not savages. We are really nice. We that's love we, everybody. Right. That's that's why they stole everything from us. We too nice. We gave it up. We too damn nice. And I and I love it about us. But also, you you hit the nail on the head. I, I think a lot of times we weren't taught to give ourselves congratulations and give ourselves credit. So now we're learning to give grace. You know, I have to do it all the time. I, I What keeps me going in my journey, especially as an entrepreneur, is I feel like, and I convince myself, I haven't really done anything. I'm at the beginning. I'm just yeah. getting started. I'm yeah. learning. I got a whole journey, you dig? But it's always that time, like you, I, God, I love that you said dry erase board. Y'all might be couples goals now. Like, <laughs> because I love the dry erase board. I love that you can see your ideas. You can see what you're yeah. writing. It's interactive. We can see what each other's doing. You know what I mean? And these are the things now that I think should be why we're getting in relationships. I feel for a long time, we were getting in for the rings, for the security, for the sex, for stupid reasons. Mm -hmm. And we need to be getting in for healing. We need to be getting in because we're teaching each other. We're growing with each other. But more importantly, these kids is watching. Parents, yeah. these kids is watching. Yeah, they are. And, you know, we, um, so, like, my oldest is 13. And then our son, he's 12. But they're both in the same grade. And um, okay. super, super both good kids. But super, super totally opposite of each other. Yeah. But super, super mature, too. But I mean, we're we're trying to teach them about like relationships and how it's like, like I tell I'll tell my son all the time, don't go finding no woman if you hurt, broke, busted, and disgusted, because then you're gonna tear her down. Yes. And I, you know, I tell we'll tell our daughter the same thing. And I do feel like relationships are a good thing to have. People should really experience them. But you should experience them when you are whole yes. or when you are healing. Like you said, we might not never be healed, but when you are healing, like because you have to think like when you are plugging into a woman, you are giving her all types of spirits from a woman that you could have been with prior to. Yes. And same with the woman when she's um interacting with the man like the men that she's had before him so i do think like soul ties is like real like that stuff is real so when you are getting into a relationship and you want it to be serious um you should do it when you're really really <laughs> old. talking financially all yeah. of that like Literally, seriously hell yeah 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 and, and i think that will help us with this crossroad we've gotten to i think a lot of our generation um, I, I used to do it some in my 20s. We were getting in relationships to heal. And you yes. should be wanting to heal for your relationship. That's Don't right. go to your relationship so they can heal you and you're yes. expecting them to heal you. Right. They're dealing with their own trauma. Yeah. Yeah. It's like leave people alone, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, hey, listen, that's straight up. You know, sometimes that's the best policy is just being to ourselves. Yeah. And right. really, really reflecting and evaluating our lives because that's going to help you get what you want. I see, you know, I talk to a lot of couples. I've done a little bit of couples therapy. Um, so a lot of things like that I see people look for in their relationships are just unrealistic. You know what I mean? And then I always, <laughs> you know, I always challenge people like, OK, so let's say you get that. Then what? You know, are you really think you're going to be happy? Is that going to be enough? You're going to want the next thing in a month? You know what I mean? Like, what do you really love about this person? Let's celebrate that. What do yep. they love about you? Let's yeah. celebrate that. What are the things that y'all know? If y'all weren't together, you probably wouldn't be getting anymore. Like, let's talk about that. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, let's bring in the positivity instead of going looking for it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's like, you know, I mean, it's important because breakups can set you back. Like, yeah. man, I know it's some women and some men on here that you like, man, that ex from like five exes ago. I'm, I, I'm still paying that credit card off or <laughs> <laughs> like, like that. Oh, that's me. That's me. Cause I don't like to, when I break up, I want to get rid of everything. I want to incinerate. <laughs> it's going in the furnace. I don't want to wear the same socks. I don't want my hair styled. I want to become a whole new person because clearly, and I, and I always look in the mirror. Clearly, I did something wrong. 
clearly <laughs> there's something I can't see. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so for me, it's a complete, it's, I guess it's the epitome of someone chopping their hair. Like, I just need a whole yeah. fresh new start. Fresh yeah, new look. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I was like, I, I tell my kids that all the time, like, and they're not like, they're not like in a dating or anything like that. But uh -huh. like, my parents, they didn't really talk to me about like boys and okay. dating sex like they weren't really open like when my dad talked to me about boys he scared me like <laughs> <laughs> it was like I don't know I just feel like you have to have a different like approach with you. <laughs> hey us men still looking for advice I don't know what to say to my daughters I'm about to and I got so right now I'm at I got six I got four girls two boys and then I got bonus kids so okay. oh man it's the army of us, you know what I mean, and I and I and I give grace all always to the moms because I mean I'm not gonna know what to do when they want to go bra shopping and do I'm just gonna freeze. Me and the boys good, we yeah. get it, we got it figured out, we straight. The yeah. girls, I'm just like, but yeah. but also in that same breath, this is how I get to enjoy life, just the duality. Like you said, I'm 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 working to be able to give you away at your wedding. Yeah, I'm working to be a part of when you start your first business. Shit, when you go through your first heartbreak, I want to be there for those things. You know what I mean? I think that's why we went through all of this so we can give them the game. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, like, I, I mean, I love having my daughters and everything, and I love having my son. But we just kind of like it, whatever. We just go based upon our experiences when we're like trying to teach uncomfortable like things to our kids and like my fiance he just he'll go just from a man's perspective of what boys want at certain ages and you know why you know why the world is like that with on the on the boy perspective of things and I just teach on my perspective as a woman or you know as once a little girl or whatever yeah. like that. so I like that there's really no way, first and foremost, there's no <laughs> such thing as like good parenting. And I, if there's, I don't care who's listening. If you can sit up there and say parenting is easy, you're not a good parent. <laughs> you're cap. You're cap. I think, I think good parenting is self-inflicted. And I think it's the opposite of what people think it is. You know what I mean? I tell parents, like, when you get to sitting up and you done bust your ass for this kid this month, this week and this Sunday, you like, damn, did I do enough? That's a good parent right there. Yeah. yeah. Were you worried if you're not doing good and you still put in work? Yeah. You're a good parent. Yeah. But that's so you can, or to me, your kids, when they get older, they're the ones that's going to let us know. Yeah. <laughs> Let's ask them. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. We talk, we talk about that all the time. It's just like, you know what? I think we're doing okay. I mean, yeah. they just have <laughs> So I'm like, as long as they don't become crackheads, I'm cool. <laughs> Nobody's hurt. I mean, I, I think we, we got it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but no, I truly, I truly believe, like, I, I truly believe thus far, like, my kids will be, our kids will be successful. Yeah. I, I truly, yes. I believe it. But then I'm like, it's either it's gonna, it's not gonna be in between with my kids. You either gonna be a bum or super, super just super. don't care about nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, you're gonna be like top dog executive. It ain't gonna be no middle, like yeah, city government official. It's not gonna be mid I mean, they're good too. They, you know, but yeah, I'm, I get like, what you're saying though. I get <laughs> I'm the same way, you know, to each his own. Like, if you want a mediocre life, I'm happy for you. But that shit scares me. I get offended when people call me normal. Yeah. Like, ain't nothing ain't not normal going on over here. Yeah. I mean, I tell, you know, I tell, I tell my um, fiance all the time, like, if we want our kids to be extraordinary, we at least, if we want them to be ordinary, we at least got to have to introduce them to extraordinary experiences yeah. like my daughter's school they're going to europe and my low level my low my low vibration family members are like 
I would never send my kid to Europe. Yeah. And I'm like, she like did this is the reason why I have to send her to this school for these types of experiences. Yeah. Like once in like, a lifetime stuff. Yeah, like she might be on the moon at 18. Who knows? Like, so I'm like, I just feel like that's some extraordinary shit, <laughs> you know, yeah. sending sending your, you know, your the school even be able, even being able to have that type of opportunity. Like we didn't have that, right? We didn't have nothing like that. Right. And even right. if we did, I know my parents wouldn't let me go to Europe. So so Kenyell said your cap if you say there's no good parents. <laughs> and someone Adrian is laughing at low vibration family members. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I agree with you hundred percent. Um, this is to me the way I want to push it with my kids. I think in the twenties and your teens is when you should really experience the world and get to know yourself. And I think there's a lot of things in this world we can be afraid of, but moving forward is the good parenting. Our generation got that scary parenting. No, we're not going to let y'all do nothing. You got to be safe. Don't jump off the porch. But we we wanted that as kids. We wanted to be outside. I wanted to try new foods and travel. You know, I wanted that life. So yeah. I think sometimes that is good parenting, going against that grain, doing your own thing. I think I my thing is when it comes to it, it, good, I, and again, we don't even want to use the word good because but, that just, that, that just that's like what other people is looking at you correct. giving you a rating of if you're a good mom or a good dad or whatever the case may be it's just more so uh if you un have an understanding that parenting is hard then you are you are a good parent because parenting yeah. is not it's not easy i don't care if there's library books right now giving you a whole rule book of it every kid is different Every experience is different. Like I take what I liked about my parents' parenting skills and what I didn't like. And I and then my own experiences and I put that together, you know. Um, like I feel like sometimes I go super above and beyond with um getting certain helps and stuff like that for my children. But then I see other parents that are like, oh, they'll just It'll catch up to them, or you know, like yeah. just flying by this. And that doesn't mean that anybody's right or wrong, it's just your experience. Like, whatever you right. and your spouse or you and your co parent deem as the need and want for your child, then that's it. It doesn't matter if it's good, bad, or, or indifferent. Like, it's yeah. whatever you see fit for your family. You're the one producing that kid to go out into the world, exactly. you're the one seeing that seed. So, so let's talk. So let's move it to another spectrum. Do you believe in healthy and unhealthy parenting? I do. I believe that some um, parents allow um, certain, like a certain level of toxic okay. in the household. Um, like just this is just my pers my perspective. Yeah. Um, my parents they were married twenty something years, but they argued a lot in front of us. Um, uh -huh. and I can say like, still to this day, like if you argue, like if, if I'm in an argument, I, I'll completely shut down. Like, okay, I can't, I, I can't even respond to that. Um, uh, my anxiety, like loud noise, like all that kind of stuff that, that fucks with me. And I do believe that it can has came from my childhood. Um, but we don't argue in front of our children. I but if you think about it, that might not be good either. Because if we don't, yeah. if we don't, if we don't solve issues in front of our children, how are they gonna know to solve an issue with their spouse? Conflict resolution. That's big. Yeah. And we weren't taught that in school and shit. So we no. need that in the home. Exactly. Um yeah. but you know, um, so as far as like unhealthy and healthy. Yeah. Parenting, I do feel like um, I feel like that's a thing. Like, absolutely, like, I agree. I mean, even like we can't, we can't really like when our kids leave our household, when our children leave our household, we can't really monitor like what they hear, right? right? We might go over a family member's house 
and people are in the other room doing things that we might not do at home. Right. Right. So you have to have a certain level of that type of um, just just that opening your eyes because they could be influenced yeah. that way. Yeah, right? that's so, the comprehension of parenting. That's that's where I think I would agree. Now that we have healthy and unhealthy parenting, there isn't really good or bad parenting. That's all perspective. Healthy, unhealthy, I feel like is is your parenting cater to the child. This is where, in my opinion, a lot of parents get in trouble. Mm -hmm. um, they get in trouble when they have multiple children and they're just trying to raise one child in each child. Doesn't mm -hmm. work. And then yeah. I think parents get in trouble when they're trying to raise the child that's in them. Yeah. And not your kid. Yeah. Each kid is different. To me, healthy parenting is first identifying each kid is different. They have different needs. Yeah. They want different parts of you. Mm -hmm. So it's first identifying what they want. And then it's not, this is, it's not giving it to them. It's being honest if you are going to give it to them or not. Kids yeah. don't want perfect. They just want to know what's going on. They want to be in a loop just like we want to be in a loop. Yeah. Like, um, so like my fiance, he is like, like super, super, super duper provider. Like that's just, yeah. that's how he shows his love. That's who he is. And he buy these kids all kinds of stuff that I'm like, they don't need that. They don't need that. They don't need it. And in turn, like they started acting like real entitled real mm. quick. And mm. so I'm like, see, now we're creating monsters. <laughs> like, you know, so that's like kind of like unhealthy. Yeah. <laughs> you know that? So we had to like scale back. And now it's like, oh, y'all got to work for everything that y'all want. And now they're like a little more appreciative. That it ain't like, you know, they ain't bratty acting and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's like about having that balance because it's like, oh, you want your kids to have everything plus more, everything that you didn't have and stuff like that. But I I had to tell my daughter one day, like. I love you and everything, but I'll never spend my last dime on something you want. Yeah. I'll spend it on something you need, but I'll never spend my last dime on something you want. And I feel like sometimes you could spoil your kids so much that they can get entitled and think yeah. that, you know, they're entitled to your all, all of your, everything, like all of your money. And it's, it's not like that. Well, At least me or something. <laughs> <laughs> they wish for it and we just make it appear like hold up no no i'm telling you now our kids they know they not come they not getting nothing unless they're like oh uh can we clean the car can we help can we talk to a customer for you like can yeah. we babysit the babies for you like what can we do to make a couple dollars to go hang out with our friends but yeah and that all to me adds to the solution you know what i mean <laughs> At the end of the day, like like you said, no one has it all figured out for everyone. We know we're figuring out our dynamic and our situations. But yeah. these situations from all these parents, I implore people to listen to these parents talk. Because one thing you're going to understand, especially when we're talking healthy and unhealthy, making a mistake as a parent is not unhealthy behavior. That's not the end of the world. Giving up on your child is failing your child to me. Yeah. It's not making a bunch of questionable decisions that don't particularly work out for them in the moment. I think you try. You're human. Yeah. But giving yeah. up on them, like, you failed them because even if they do turn out well, it wasn't it, it through your inspiration. <laughs> yeah. You had no intentions on this happening. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think once we mature more, you know, we'll heal a lot of these things naturally because the, the point of the generation is to evolve. We're making better humans <laughs> to where yeah. they don't have to go through as much trauma as we went through, but yeah. they have more insight than we have. Yeah. And you know what? Um, again, like there's no like right or wrong way to parent. And another thing is like, I had to give my parents a lot more grace. Cause you know how sometimes like as you're an adult and as you have kids and you're like growing with your kids, you like, man, that was some stupid ass shit. My mom used to make me do right. <laughs> like, um, so like, I, I have to like, think about that when I'm like raising my kids and stuff like that. Like it's really whatever, like, 
whatever you, whatever situation you see fit in that moment to do, then that's what it's gonna be. But I mean, I'm I'm we're I'm super hard on like my oldest daughter, and and it's kind of like now that I got super little babies because we got 14 year stretch, it's like if I mess up with these big kids, at least I could write my wrong. Run it back. But, Run it, start over. But yeah, like I, in my mind, like I was like in my mind, I'm like cocky with it because I'm like, man, yeah. I'm raising like a baby boss because I don't want my kids to be mom, dad, can I can you pay my rent this month, bro? Like I need them to be like, mom, I got I got a deal, but I need a half a million dollars. Can you uh help me? <laughs> you think you can help me with that? Like I don't need them to be broke. Like oh. I can't pay my car payment or my cell phone bill. Like, now nah, y'all gonna have enough money to have all that type of stuff. But if it's some big deals or something like that, we could try to figure out how to get that bread up. But other than that, like, y'all ain't about to be no slouches. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, when we see the greats, you know what I mean? Which, again, is perspective. We see the successful people, which is perspective. You know, it looks different to each people. But the ones I pay attention to listen to, the thing they have consistent is that someone when they were younger was putting that into them, was telling them, like, look, you're unstoppable. You can do anything you want to do. You know what I mean? You don't have to get stuck in doing something. Go do something else. You yeah. can constantly grow. Like, life is not over until you stop living it. But as long as it's going on, like, use that. And, you know, one thing I want to say to um, all the parents out there, regardless if you're a seasoned parent, a new parent or whatever, never project your fears onto your children. Please don't. Because children are probably mo the most vulnerable people in the world, first and foremost. Secondly, you are always your children's hero. It doesn't matter what your flaws are. You're your, ch your child's hero. So they are going to do and think every what you say. So... Um, like whatever your child wants to do or be like if you if you see your child being super creative or like art put a paintbrush in his hand don't put a basketball in his hand like right. that's just my opinion like don't I agree. don't project your fears onto your children like I remember when I was in fifth grade and this is the thing I never played no sports I wasn't in like involved in nothing and I think it's because, like, I remember when I was in the fifth grade, I wanted to play the violin so bad. It just looked it so dope. And my mom going to say, your arm going to hurt all the time. Like, how you going to coach your arm up now? <laughs> and it's just like, I could have been a super great violin. <laughs> <laughs> so I, try, I, I, like, I try not to project, like, my fears onto to the, my kids yeah i say man that that's <laughs> wonderful that is truly wonderful like this was a beautiful conversation i needed to have this I, i've learned so much about you you know <laughs> what i mean and we dropped so much game for people out there like yeah, yeah they're gonna keep replaying this one for sure like so is there anything you want to leave the people with some final words a message a quote a poem whatever you got Ooh, that's on the spot with it. You already know. <laughs> um, I would say um, to everybody who is listening, continue to be dope, to continue to be fearless, continue to be you. Don't let anybody stop you. Keep going. You are great. You will get through. Um, and you're strong. That's it. I love it. That was powerful. Can you tell them where to find you at one last time? Okay, well, I ain't super big on social media, but um, you can find me on Facebook under Kenyatta Bosley or my business page, Prestige Rentals. Um, if there's anybody out there who is looking for a new business adventure, um, I'm the girl. You holler at me um, if you are trying to get into a new business, trying to get into corporate housing, the rental game business, um, all that kind of good stuff. Hit me up. I love it. Yeah, this was a blessed episode, man. And y'all got this for free. Y'all better <laughs> thank us later for this. All right, y'all. We see y'all later. All right. Be blessed.